Okay, good, I still have my wheel tail. I thought for a second that I'd sold that off camera, so good, glad that I didn't, because... Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. Last time we explored a bit of the Inn of a Pride exhibit night 3, this time we're going to actually head straight to the nurse's office and we'll be able to complete a request immediately. The one that was brought on by Tail Puns. So yeah, if we check the requests here, we have Obtain a Fluffy Tail. Now the member certificate here is actually a very good item. Are you... Yes, I'm definitely sure. Unfortunately, Theo's going to get shafted here. Um, Elizabeth? Good thing Teddy's not here to hear this, because he'd probably jump at the opportunity. So yes, to get this, you have to defeat the Mark Wheel with Wind, which is normally resistant to, but it's generally not that hard. It may be good for you to hear what Theo has to say. Except we already have one. And I guess I can show this at least once. Yeah, the dialogue does change if you already have the item. So let's report. Thank you very much. Oh. Ah, well, yeah, my Garudine may have done that. And once again, ah, uh, yeah, I feel bad for Theodore. <laughs> this will be your reward. For this, though, we get the member certificates, and I'll quickly go into my inventory and show what that does. And we've got a new level out of that, too. But yes, what the member certificate does is... Drumroll, please. Just wait for me to get there. Here it is. 10% off skill cards. Considering how good skill cards tend to be in this game, this is a very useful thing to have. So now we can safely sell our hall at Theodore's. Huh. I wonder where Theodore gets all his money to pay us for all these items. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. We can buy chewing souls now too. I actually went through a lot of SP recovery items uh, against that, that Seeker fight, but I might want to wait until the boss of this labyrinth, or actually the fight that we'll get at the end of this floor, because yes, there will be another Elizabeth fight request. In terms of armor though, a lot of us are very behind in the armor department, so I might as well buy some better armor for some people. Except we're going to have access to machine mallets very, very soon. It's always a dilemma. It's only a little bit of an increase, but like I said, machine mallets we will have access to very soon. Leaf kimono though, we won't get access to until the fourth floor. So I could buy some rune dresses now. It's kind of hard to think whether... I don't know exactly how much increased defense affects the damage formula. Whether or not that increased HP is better than the increased defense. Hard armor is also gender neutral, so... Might as well buy a few hard armors. Kind of soul potpourri, that's new. Won't be able to get that yet, though. Disinfectant would have been useful to have uh, against the uh, Basilisk fight, but we couldn't get that back then. Exorcism Stone. We have some items here we can eventually get that'll block various types of binds, which can be useful against enemies that employ those. Yeah, we now have the Pegasus Strap, which gives you agility plus five. And that's all, so let's leave here for now. I'm surprised there hasn't been a stroll conversation recently. But anyway, is there anything new we can do now on level 53? Ah, we can fuse uh, the, yeah, this, this, um, totally based off of the genie from Aladdin. But yes, Jin, who has absorbed wind as well, which will be useful for people like Yosuke, Kanji, Yu, I like Black Frost, though. Yeah, Salome's Kiss is pretty much impossible to pass down to most things. Uriel and Triglav. Well, that's just enough skill slots for Impure Reach and Mahama on. Before I fuse away Uriel, though, I might want to show this. Paths of Lights. 
Uh, yeah, pretty useful skill to extract for your navigators, except it's very, very expensive. Uh, I might as well go for this. So how about Impure Reach and Mahama on? Thankfully, this persona will offer us more than three wishes. We can also make Kartikeya and Dekarabia. But I can't really make those two without getting rid of something that I really need, so... Let's leave for now. And in terms of party setup, well, I think I'll mainly just choose whoever's lowest level here. Whoa, the Twin Capes is a big increase in defense. So here's what I've gone with in terms of equipment. Yeah, everyone now has over 200 defense, which is pretty nice. You've got the stealth shirt, and these two have the two hard armors that I bought. As for Personas, I've got Gary Stu with um, the status ailments and Salome's Kiss. Junpei obviously takes Tam Lin, because what physical attacker wouldn't? You don't need one. Yukiko has that for Absorb Ice and for the Ice Attacks, and Ken has that for Impure Reach, which he already has, but still. Mainly for Mahamon. And I, I really want to find some Personas so I can sacrifice them to you to get Calming Lull, but... Uh, that might not be for a little bit, also I need to go to the nurse's office and restore Ken's SP because I gave him the all-around badge. And just so I don't forget later, power spot is there. Here I come! Oh, there's a treasure box over there! And there's that one tile that I missed earlier. That was easy! And there's that space covered. Well, there's Endure working, and Junpei has some of the best armor of anyone I have here, so these things hit very hard. Okay, first sacrifice fodder is... a baboon! <laughs> How'd I do? I wish I'd get taller as I leveled up too. <laughs> well, you will in a few years in Arena Ultimax. Anyway, Ken now has a full revive spell, which is pretty cool. Yeah, nothing he does better than Teddy. A tough break, but I have an awful lot to live for. I'm going on ahead. It's hard to tell whether Junbei is being serious Yay! or sarcastic There's when he says things box. like that. Come on, over here. And here we are back here. I know a lot of people would have abbreviated these a different way, but I just thought this was funny. So, Turtle, Dragon, Bird, Tiger. Let's explore until we find uh, each of the gates, though. So we have the Genbu Gate there. Uh, it lit up, but we don't care, because there's no way we can actually, um, get through it at this point. And yeah, this is a complete dead end, so we're gonna have to use the one-way shortcut. And the lantern went off, obviously, because we retraced our steps. Doesn't that wall look kind of strange? Maybe we'll find something. Another one-way shortcut. This floor's almost- and that- that there would be the Seiryu gate. This floor is almost as bad about the one-way shortcut as the beginning of You in Wonderland. And as you can see, no one-way shortcut here, so that's a complete dead end. A pilgrimage where you can't retrace your steps combined with one-way passages. I see what they're doing here. Okay, this room can be a little bit tricky sometimes, if I'm remembering right. You know, is there a secondary color that I could color the other ones? territory in. I suppose that might make things easier. There's an FOE nearby. Do they overlap at all? No, I think the the middle one just hops around uh, the center, and then there's one who hops around the um, outside. Do you think there's something strange about that wall? Let's look. They sort of cover for each other Let's in a way. Go. Mm, 
Do we call this a lion wheel? Seems like everyone's reacting to just about all the shadows in this uh, in this labyrinth. I also just realized there are a lot of enemies weak to ice in these areas, and I suppose that makes sense given that we're in an area representing peace. Yes, that's how you pronounce it. What the? It's all mine. I should mention that uh, Al, uh, Al Rane, or again, however you pronounce it, uh, I do know that it was mistranslated in one of the Castlevania games as Alura Une, but that's definitely not what it's supposed to be. Also, it's knocked down Myriad Arrows time. <laughs> And all out attack. This thing's having a really bad day. But like I was saying, no yeah. as much as I like that persona, the law behind it is very disturbing. Okay, uh, more skills persona. I already have a better Flaros registered for Compendium, I think. Blink and you'll miss it. <laughs> Don't think I've heard Junpei say that quote before. Anyway, we have found... I beg of you, please heal me! No worry, I'll heal you. Well, at least you can go, Will. Nope, Ken does not have healing. So we've now found, uh, Byako, or, um... Uh, by who, I think, according to... I call BS on that wall! <laughs> Devil Survivor 2. I mainly know that because I actually recently used, um... Uh, Byako, or by who in Devil Survivor oh, 2 to make, um... There's something strange about that wall? A very infamous demon from that game, so for some reason in that game they thought it would be a good idea to make Titania null fire electric, uh, well, force, not wind in that game. Um, and ice? That's an She's weak to physical, there. but it's ex... Uh-oh. Yeah, gotta pay attention when you're around dealing with these guys. It's dangerous. Please retreat. I will protect Ray. Oh boy, that's bad. Yeah, these things are pretty terrifying. Let's get out of here. But yeah, like I was saying, she's weak to physical, but it's very easy to pass down null physical onto her. I did that with um also thank you for the fan disservice there, sweaty guy. Uh, I did that by fusing Rakshasa and um and like I said. Uh, by who or Byako, because Rakshasa naturally starts out with Null Physical. So with Null Physical, you have a Titania who's only vulnerable to Curse and Almighty. Uh, so yeah, uh, of course, uh, later in the game, there are going to be lots of enemies with Piercing Attacks and Almighty, so yeah. Okay, I do remember that that tile right there is very hard to step on due to the way this sweaty guy is constantly hopping back and forth. I might have to come back later for it. We have at least found all of the gates. Got a one-way shortcut there. There's something bothering me. And this shortcut is also one way. Three enemies. They're powerful. Three brothers. Is the bottom one the oldest? <laughs> well, I guess the bottom one's the biggest head, but. I don't know, that doesn't necessarily imply it's the oldest brother. Why am I going into the semantics of these kind of shadows here? Aw, oh, that ended too soon. Just remember the Devil Survivor 2 has another demon of around the same level as Titania called Purple Mirror, uh, that's based on a very bizarre urban legend about um something huh? about in Japan about Isn't if you give a girl a purple wall? mirror for a certain birthday, then they'll die or something. It's it's weird. Sleep Dagger. Interesting. Uh, I probably got that legend totally wrong, but I know it is based off an herbal, urban legend, but you can make that uh, that demon reflect pretty much everything. So, <laughs> that is kind of silly. But again, most of the enemies um, towards the end of that game probably use piercing physical attacks or almighty. Here I come! Yeah, I just fought someone in that game who loves oh, to spam Megado, and Megado hits extremely hard in that one. It's Look, one of those games where Megado is incredibly here. powerful. 
didn't even need carving while there. Got a very good haul out of that. So anyway, I'm going to see you back at the... Yeah, I have to go back through the door because I can't go anywhere without the sweaty guy jumping on me. Rock. I don't understand. It's still standing. Two enemies this is remain. A tough one. Um, what should I do next? A lot of voice clips seem to overlap there. I should mention that I obviously know that djinns are real things from Arabic mythology. I wasn't saying this entire persona was based off of the genie from Aladdin. I was just saying that its visual design seems to be inspired by it. I thought you'd do that. This is probably not going to go well. Or it could just hit most of its uh, attacks and kill you because myriad arrows. We're invincible! Yeah, we're only 50% of the way through exploring the floor, by the way. But I have an awful lot to live for. Oh wow, Medea's not healing much at all. Yeah, I should probably either get healing hands or try and upgrade that. Over here. So, we need to go through first Genbu, uh, then Seiryu, there. Then Suzaku. Now the Suzaku gate is the hardest part of this pilgrimage because getting through here safely without incurring uh, the wrath of that sweaty guy down there is kind of difficult. And then we also need to get through the um, get through the white uh, the white tiger gate last. This one right here. So, all right, there is actually a shortcut there. I, I thought there was. That makes uh, this make a bit more sense. Also. There's a one-way shortcut there. I think I might as well map that out before I start this pilgrimage. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. I think we have to start here. Go... Let me see if I can try and mark out the possible potential route in... light blue. Through there. Through there. Ah, there's a shortcut there. Right. So we actually have to go down there. And then through the gate. And then down. And then we need to... I'm not going to cover up my... FOE range indicators. Then we need to go down here. Yeah, I think I've got an idea of how we need to do this. Okay, there's another shortcut down there. Yeah, so you've got to make sure that you've mapped up all the shortcuts, because we need to start this uh, down below. That's an FOE over there. Here. So now, through the turtle gate... And next, we have to resist the temptation to immediately go through the Seiryu gate, because that would instantly screw us over. It's an FOE! Be careful, everybody! Sidestep around these FOEs. Now we go through this one. That's number two lit. But yeah, the hardest part of this is the Suzaku gate. Okay, please don't be a Persona with more skills, because I, I, I want some sacrifice fodder. Ah, uh, ironically, we get Suzaku, just as I was talking about Aww, Suzaku. That ended too soon. Speaking of which, I'm very surprised Pokemon has not done well Pokemon based off of the four celestial animals yet. Because it seems like the natural thing they would use for legendary Pokemon, but, uh, no. They haven't done them yet. Okay, so let's head through here. And yeah, I think this is actually kind of a trap. I think we actually have to go through here and hit the Suzaku gate from the other direction. Over here. 
because otherwise it's actually easy to get stuck. Ah, there's an FOE. Okay, so next is Suzaku. And now we have to go through here. And then this should be the final one. And back through here, we can now use the one-way shortcuts to return back to where the door is. I'll see you back at the door. I do remember that trick with the Suzaku gate here. Enemy is rare. I will defeat it. Oh, there's actually a new enemy here. So we can get that Komodo that I was talking about for the better female-only armor now. I thought you didn't show up until the fourth floor. Valuing Nyorgor is weak to electricity and resists ice and fire, but it nulls light. So, uh, yeah, finally something that's immune to instant death, but not weak to the other one. Of course, I'm just going to go straight for Tentarafus here. Does anyone here... No, I don't think anyone here has Belial for the Lethargy Circle, which is a bit of a problem. You have Bolt Link, though, so I might try that, and then you're going to go ahead and... Uh, to clap that thing, and Yukiko is going to, uh, unfortunately, Yukiko doesn't really have a lot she can do at this point. Is Ken's weapon agility bind or strength bind? I think it was strength bind. Well, it doesn't matter, it missed anyway. What the? Here I go. Well, I guess we aren't going to find out what this thing does. Platinum coin saved one row, but the, ent the entire other row got hit by that. Well, at least it hit the one that was linked. I can go my deadly dance. I'm sorry. I couldn't get the Chan can't dodge or run right now. Let's stay on the defensive. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that if we've seen that attack from Yukiko before. I guess you'll just be on uh, standby healing duty. Here I, go. I have a feeling some of these are gonna run away. You call for a hero? Or they could get crit by myriad arrows. Seriously? Oh no, the crits were on the Yogor. Of course they were. Come on, Tentarafu, you can hit them. It dodged. Really? Yukiko chan, wake up! It's dangerous if you get hit! Nixon lobster? Presto! Hamburger steak. I haven't actually heard you could go asleep for it before, but that one's pretty good. Here I go. Seriously? Oh, well, we got one of them at least. Oh! And it's disappeared. Two enemies remain. Good. Let's keep wearing them down. Finn, listen to our leader, okay? At least we've shown that. We haven't actually seen them do that before. But this thing is weak to Hummer, so it's just going to straight up die to that. And then Myriad Arrows, and I guess I can Thunderclap even though it's not really going to be useful at all. And you're just going to Hummer on the... And it's going to explode, but it doesn't matter at all, because it's going to go down. I haven't actually seen these explode before, but that's probably tempting fate. Here I go. And it has slapped itself to death. We won't be getting that much experience from this though. And there's Anubis again. <laughs> now that it's 
Oh, that was decent, though. You're the same as always. I might have to use Junpei for multiple expeditions. He's falling a bit behind in experience. Speaking of falling behind, I might want to go back to that Teddy event earlier and see if that's changed now that I've leveled up Teddy a bit more. Let's go. And seal lifted. Two pilgrimages down. There's one more to go on this floor, and it's a pretty big one. But this part of the floor is a little bit interesting because we have the bonfire back again. The fire hasn't really played much of a role in puzzles so far. There's something really off about that wall over there. Look at it. But it will soon. Okay, I think now's a pretty good time to leave and save because I've just completed that pilgrimage and opened up a really good earlier area. Aw, oh, that ended too soon. Okay, we have some new items we can buy. Spiked bra, I believe, was actually in P3. Uh, I think it was in P4 as well, I forget, but that, that sounds incredibly painful. <sighs> Hang on a second. Scardi, Thoth, Flaros. Three personas that I'm not really using. Can make Black Rider a persona that I will need later. I wanted to sacrifice to get Calming Lull, but I might as well go for this, actually. Mataru Kajra I definitely want. Maybe Sleep Circle and... Uh, oh, one of the other riders has Guillotine. So how about Mediarama? Oh! Oh! I can't skip this, which means Fusion Accident number two! A lot of people are wondering when um, I get another one of these, actually. So let's see what I get. Oh, it seems to have gone differently than planned. You are much higher level. Sibley is a persona that I tend to not use for quite some time. Uh, let me just quickly... Where the heck are you, Believe? Now level 58, a bit lower than I thought, but, uh... Ah... Uh, that is solid, I guess, but I kind of prefer fusing different skills onto Believe. That's kind of unfortunate, because I really wanted Black Rider, but... Could make you out of Alraune, actually, and I do have a decent amount of money to get you back out of the Compendium. This would be giving up Sibley immediately, but I'd probably be able to fuse a better version of Sibley later. Because I would kind of like to have Circle Recovery on you, and Binding Hands. Okay, Binding Hands, Circle Recovery. Already got Lethargy Circle. Uh, Silent Circle... And Mataru Kaja. This is kind of going to be a better version of Belial, which is sort of weird. There we go, that's Black Rider for real this time. Yeah, double circles and binding hands, along with later on summon demon. Black Rider is, well, less of an HP buff, but... Other than that, you've got Binding Hands, Better Circles, and uh, we also have... Uh, that'll synergize really well with Judgment Sword as well, which... Uh, better if you have stronger regular weapons, but that can be pretty useful if you've got, like I said, powerful regular weapons. Okay, this may seem weird, but I kind of want to sacrifice Belial here. 
because there's nothing that I can really make out of it, and I really want Calming Lull. That's the entire reason why I fused this persona. And uh, another Suzaku Plume, which we don't really need. And let's get you back, because I still want Salome's Kiss. So we do have all three Riders now. We unfortunately can't do the special fusion combination with them until we are, let me just check, until we're level 63. So that's going to be a little while off. But anyway, now that we've done all that, we might as well save. You know, why not switch over to Black Rider for a little bit? Because I, I actually really want that Judgment Sword skill. Damn, the fire went out. And nowhere near enough time to get the fire over here, so we'll need to find a different source of fire. A lot of pinwheels in this area. Can't pass through that way. Can't pass through that way. We do have this kind of, like, almost... This is like, looks like a... I don't know how you describe it, like a festival podium, I guess? Shortcut feels a little bit redundant, but it's probably so you can get fire over there. You know, I had a feeling we'd immediately get more sacrifice fodder. Pabil Sarg? Actually, that's a free Lethargy Circle skill <laughs> card. Over, well, not free, we'll see? still have to pay to extract it, but... It is a Lethargy Circle skill card that we don't need to summon our Pabil Sarg from the Compendium in order to get. So that's going to be very good. Another piece. Hey, do you spot. think power spots emit uh, negative ions or something? And we don't need to worry about ambushes here, and of course we only get two. Uh, well, that was kind of a pointless uh, loop. Let's head further in. Ah, oh, that ended too soon. In terms of things I could talk about here, I actually have seen a Japanese festival once. It was when I was on a school trip uh, over to a Japanese high school for kind of an exchange program. And uh, it was it was interesting. Don't remember exactly what it was for, but we have another sealed door. <sighs> so this time, yet yeah, Genbu is once again first. That will not always be the case. Genbu, Suzaku, Seiryu, and Byako. I guess I'll just do it the more traditional way this time. But it's actually going to be a little while before we can complete that pilgrimage. I can say right now, on the other side of that door is the end of this floor. And also a very major Persona 3 root exclusive cutscene. Pretty much what a whole lot of the Persona 3 exclusive scenes have been leading up to this whole time. And I have a Here tangent that I could go on about that, but I... I think that I might as well oh, right, save that until the box. next part. Because, yeah, as you can see, we're only 60% of the way through this floor. This is gonna be a big pilgrimage. Blink and you'll miss it. But I suppose while I don't have that much to talk about, I guess I could mention the fact that, uh, yeah, many people reacted to Myriad Arrows being kind of overpowered. Uh, against that, um, that shadow boss fight from earlier. Personally, I think what's really broken is Shura Tensei. It triples your attack stats, and it's stacked with power charge, which also triples your attack stats. Three shadows. We're invincible! It doesn't take up a buff slot either. And also, it's the downside of... It's downside of reducing your HP by half every turn doesn't matter when the enemy is dead in a single turn. So, yeah, I wonder if they'll nerf Shura Tensei at all in the second one. I know that there's definitely, like, there aren't any skills like Shura Tensei in mainline Shin Megami Tensei or Persona. And... I wonder if there's anything like Shura Tensei in Etrian Odyssey, because I haven't really heard of anything like that. But anyway, yeah, as you can see, there's this gigantic hallway there. Uh-oh. 
Wait, you use that on Ken? Wow, you're stupid. That one was really strong. It made me nervous. Da da da! An FOE has appeared. Oh, we have another case of double sweaty guys. Once again, I'm gonna switch colors for marking these uh, ones where it's out. All oh, right, we have two kind of overlapping double cross shapes here. So you've got to be really, really careful around um, overlapping sweaty guys. That sounds very weird, but yeah. Can be incredibly easy to accidentally step on a tile that they're going to jump right to. Maybe we'll find something. One way shortcut there, let's not take that. Yeah, marking these guys' roots out in different colors is actually a lifesaver here. As you can see, though, there's a fire door. So we can't get any further where we currently are in our current state. him up shortly. But as you can see, we have another unlit torch here. So obviously a big part of this is going to be figuring out how to get fire so we can open up that fire door. Oh, oh hi, we're enemies. No, it wasn't. That was a huge amount of experience. No item drops, though. Junbei-kun, your health's getting low. Can you get healed? So, with that Stairs. shortcut open... So this place goes further on, then? Yes, it does. We can actually head back up to the previous floor and finally get 100% map completion here. <laughs> Looks like you've got this floor mostly figured out now. This was literally the last I step we needed. Wall's hiding something. We should check it out. So let's open up this... Transfer the fire down to the third floor. And I think we'll continue to move this fire forward next time because I want to end this part by getting the map completion chest for floor two. And what do we get here? Superficial statue. Yet another key item that we have to give to Theodore so we can make some stuff. As you can see, we have a cutscene here. Oh. So the superficial statue gets us. We can now buy Growth 2, so that could be useful for grinding purposes. And that's all we'll do this time. We made some pretty good progress on the third floor and finally finished the second floor. So next time, we will continue with the third floor, complete the final pilgrimage, and get a significant P3 exclusive scene.